Hi, this short video is about a particular model of Knipex wire strippers. I've tried many different types of wire strippers in the past, but this model is fairly unusual, and so I wanted to explore its capabilities. It has the usual Knipex design style and hard plastic handles with a soft grip area. This range is known as a precision insulation stripper, and there are several models in the range. For an electronics engineer, the model 121206, which is the one I used, offers a good range that goes from 0.14 to 6 mm squared of wire area, which is a huge range. It corresponds to about 26 AWG to 10 AWG, and this covers about 80% of my needs. The key parts of the tool are shown here. There are four blades which perform the stripping action. This is two to four times as many blades as on other wire strippers, which explains the complexity of this tool. Each of the four blades is individually manufactured for its position in the tool, and a lot of accuracy is designed in the tool as well to coordinate the movement and location of the blades. There is only one adjustment on the tool, and that is a length stop, which can be moved left and right. And there is also a scale marked on the tool so that no measurement is needed to strip the wire to the desired length. Once the desired strip length has been set, the wire is inserted into the tool so that it rests in the blade in the closest size notch to suit the wire. Now there is only one action to perform to complete the entire wire stripping action, and that is to squeeze a handle. The neat thing is that as a handle is squeezed, it performs several tasks. Firstly, it causes the blades to cut into the insulation. Next, it separates the blades horizontally, causing the insulation to be forced apart. As a handle is continued to be squeezed further, the blades separate vertically too, releasing the wire. Now the wire can be removed from the tool. Once the handles are released, it's ready for the next wire. Looking closely at the tool, you can see that the blades are very sharply cut. They are replaceable too, although I've not had to do that in one year of use. There are six locations to place the wires and it's possible to eyeball it and get very good repeatable results. Here you can see the action of the blades as the handle is squeezed. The length stop is easy to use too, it's just squeezed and moved left to right and the distance is measured off on the scale. So if I take a wire, I'm using a 14AWG 2.5mm squared wire here so it's quite large. I can insert it into the nearest size hole and the whole task is done in seconds. No strands are lost at all. Here I will try a 1mm squared 18AWG wire. And this is a 16AWG wire. For all of these tests, there is zero strand loss and I could not see any wire nicks, but in the later tests I stripped the same wire twice, at a short length, and then stripped the wire ends again at a longer length, which will help to show if there are any marks present. These wires are already a reasonably tough exercise for wire strippers, but I also tested more difficult wires, but it is possible to see that lower cost wire strippers will already fail at this task. These are from a DIY store chain in the UK. They have this awkward length stop, which is not fit for purpose, even though I try to fit a fibre washer for more friction. This tool has two blades and tries to grip the insulation with an L-shaped metal piece. This can be effective, but not with these particular wire strippers. First I decide which hole is most appropriate for the wire. The wire does strip, but the result is only okay at best though. The wire was stripped at an angle, and also notice how much insulation got crashed.
This wire doesn't even strip. There is not enough grip for this wire size. And I have the same problem with the green wire. Back to the Knipex tool. In order to test it, I obtained as many wire types as possible. It includes common wire types, but also unusual wires too. I split the wires into seven categories and tested with 50mm lengths. The first group was PVC insulated wires of the type used inside equipment chassis. There's no issues at all. The numbers in circles at the right side show which hole I used in the tool. If you look closely at the insulation, you can see there is a step near the cut. This is because the flat sides of the blades, when pressed together in the tool, have about 0.5mm gap. So there is a very tiny gap between the blade pair that holds the insulation on one side of the tool and the blade pair that stripped the insulation on the other side. So when the blades are separated, sometimes the insulation is cut and tears slightly on one side of the tool and sometimes on the other. This is just an artifact of using four blades. But in, in context, this step size is tiny. It just looks large because this photo is zoomed in. The amount of wire stripped here is just three millimetres. This test was just to see if the wire could be stripped at such a short length. Some wire strippers will just stretch the insulation instead of stripping the wire because the blade is blunt or inaccurate. And with those wire strippers, it's not possible to cut at this short length. Next, I stripped a further 15 millimetres from the same wire ends bringing the total length to 18 millimetres. There was absolutely no, no problem at all. The wire looks clean and no nicks are visible at the original three millimetre location. No strands were lost either. I decided to see what would happen with more challenging insulation. PTFE and MPPE insulated wires often used in industrial and high temperature equipment. The insulation is harder than PVC too and often the insulation wall is thinner with these types of insulators but at 3mm there was no issue. With the additional 15mm stripping, the blue wire slipped out from the remainder insulation. I reattempted with 100mm length of wire instead of 50mm, and then there was no problem. 50mm is extremely short, so it is a very extreme test, but 100mm is not particularly long either. This was actually a very challenging test, because the PTFE material is really tough, and also the wire inside may not have a lot of friction against the insulation wall on the inside, due to the slippery properties of PTFE. And plus, I was also stripping off a huge 30% of the insulation by trying to remove those 15 millimetres. It was also extremely impressive that there were no nicks or strands lost. I can't knock off any points from the performance of the tool under these tests. Into hobby and low voltage electronics territory, the usual PVC wire sizes were no trouble at all for this Knipex tool either. It functioned at the longest stripping lengths too. Some applications call for very flexible wires. One example is test leads for multimeters. And these wires have hundreds of really fine strands. Often the insulation is very soft too, and the insulation thickness can be large to provide protection. There's really no issue here, but notice that for one of the wires, the stripping action only removed the outer portion of the insulation, but left the inner blue portion unstripped. This wire is unusual and has a double layer of insulation for color coding purposes. It is a twin figure of eight style of wire with outside black PVC insulation and inside there is blue and red insulation. I was able to remove both layers in a single action by using the next smaller sized hole which was hole 4 marked in green in the photo. When I stripped a longer length of the same wire the story was different for the double insulation wire. The smaller hole was not suitable and I had to choose the third hole to get perfect wire stripping results. Another approach could be to strip just the outer insulation and then strip the inner, inner insulation in the second pass using a smaller hole, but this is unnecessary. In summary, there was success with all the high strand count wires provided the correct hole is used, although with the unusual double insulation wire, the correct hole changed from the 3mm to the 15mm wire strip length. No wire strands were lost with the correct holes and these very fine wires remained nicely woven in their original configuration. Speaker wire is good to test too, and I tried some typical low-cost varieties. 
These nearly always have very thick insulation out of proportion to the copper content in order to mislead consumers. There's no trouble stripping these wires at the short 3mm strip length and the additional 15mm length was no problem either. This tool is not intended for coax cable but I thought I'd try it anyway. It worked fine for stripping the outer insulation on the two cables that I had. For the RG179 the wire did slip out with a 15mm length but at 100mm it was fine. With the RG178 cable I expected it to fail but it worked very well. The cable has a very fine strand braid and also a hard thin outer insulation but there was no damage to the braid from what I could tell. The final group of wires was made up of mains flex lead used to connect equipment to the main supply. The Knipex tool is severe overkill for this and there was no problem for the three wires I tested which were 3 amp, 6 amp and 13 amp cables, both at the short stripping length and at the longer length. To summarise all this, the wire stripper worked well with all wire types that I had, including hard and soft insulation, different insulation thicknesses, very fine high strand count wire and other unusual wires too. There is zero strand loss provided the wire is inserted into the correct hole. The tool is successful with extremely short 50mm length wires for nearly all wire types despite stripping a huge 30% of the insulation off the wire. I hope this report was useful and thank you for watching.